And here come their Japanese opponents, Raika Kakiwa and Miyuki Maeda. It's going to be tough for them. Young Wang Siali, obviously uh, one of the best women's doubles partnerships there's been. It, it's great, isn't it, having the uh, Bellarup Super Arena like this? What, what are you up to, Peter, at the moment? Obviously, here watching some badminton this week, but elsewhere. I'm still keeping in touch with badminton. Um, I'm coaching in a youth talent project uh, in here in Copenhagen, where Badminton Denmark and a local community is supporting a project uh, where I'm coaching 16 of the best players we have uh, between 13 and uh, 17 years of age. And uh, I'm still actually practicing quite a bit, uh, not playing any official matches, but uh, just to feel normal, I have to practice. I suppose it's been in your system for so yeah, long, it's hard to lose it. I cannot let go of it, so it's a huge part of me. So I, I need to I need to practice uh, almost every day. Um, and aside from that, um, I have a lot of uh, things going on with uh, Asia, uh, with China uh, and other Asian countries as a kind of a brand ambassador for Danish companies that want to move into these countries. I have been able to create a, a good name for myself uh, during the years in, in these countries and hopefully I can be kind of a door opener and ambassador for these companies uh, and also create kind of a, a new future for me and make a transition towards other things uh, beside badminton. Yeah, sounds terrific. Well, obviously we've got a couple of partnerships here, one from China and one from Japan. Uh, Wang Xiali, Wu Yang, obviously. I, I take it you feel like most people here will, will be the favorites for this one. So this one, uh, I'm pretty sure the Chinese, uh, they are the favorites and uh, even though the Japan, Japanese pair is quite good, uh, maybe they'll put up a fight, but the Chinese, uh, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take it. So Denmark's in a, in a healthy state. You say you've got these youngsters coming through as we look at uh, the record this year for Wang Xiali, Yu Yang, uh, maybe another Peter Gator coming through? Well, obviously, we have uh, Victor uh, in the semi-final, sure. uh, only 20 years of age. But underneath that? Underneath that, uh, we will have a, I think we have a couple of guys coming. Uh, but we need to put in a huge effort uh, in order to keep up with the with the Asians. I'm trying my best. Uh, I, th I think at the moment, uh, ladies singles, uh, we're actually better, you know, than in the men's singles. But uh, uh, there is guys coming up. We need we need to work even harder. We need to make a, a bigger pool of, of young guys coming forward. Not only once every five years, uh, but one every year or two every year. So I'm trying my best to to put in some effort and. Uh, trying to influence also the Danish uh, way that we do things. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's, it's not an easy challenge. Well, we were seeing there, Uyang Wang Sierli uh, coming through this week in uh, straight games in, in all of their matches. The uh, number seven seeds here certainly got their work cut out uh, and they had to come from a set down to beat the number 13 seeds. Uh, Yu, Kuen Yu in uh, the last 16. 45 minutes to beat their compatriots though yesterday. Peter, it's been uh, great to have a chat with you. I know you're going to be uh, especially interested in the match, the one after this one, but we're going to co concentrate on this. It's been great to meet you, and uh, best of luck with all your projects in the future. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Peter Gator with us there ahead of this uh, women's doubles encounter on court number one. Match three, just to remind you, that was supposed to be the men's doubles match is uh, not going to happen because of an injury for Kim Sarang. So that means uh, that... Uh, the other pair from Korea are through to the final already, um, which is why we have these pairs already out on court. They have met uh, twice before. The Chinese pair have won both, both happening last year. They are confirmation of that, 23-21, 21-9 at the end of last year at the Super Series Finals. And the other one was at the Korea Open. Of course, the winner of this match takes on the winner from uh, match number one, which was uh, obviously went the way of the uh, Chinese pair, Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei. Great to hear from Peter Gader. But uh, Jim Langerson back with us now. Yeah. Had a little break. Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah, to, Peter's saying obviously that the, the Chinese pair here are, are going to be favourites, but we saw Kakiwa and Maeda in action, didn't we, earlier in the week and uh, against the Indonesian pair. And, uh, Which we thought would be close. Yeah. Uh, One, 
but I just have a, a feeling that Yuan Wang is... For me, they're so physically strong, it's going to be difficult. And when you bear in mind there are an hour and 27 minutes on court as well, you know, a couple of rounds ago, Kerr yeah. and you, I know they didn't look that weak yesterday. No, but the difference here is yesterday they could... Uh, the Indonesian pair had a lo lot of trouble with this, we just saw here, <laughs> with hitting it down on the Japanese pair. And, but Wang and Yu has, has the ability to... Especially Wang hitting so hard, so so the Japanese. Now, Marzwara and Polly, they beat 21 19, 21 13 yesterday. It still, it still took an hour for that, even though it was 21. Oh. Service over. One, two. A service fault called against Uyang. I suppose that's one way for the. Uh, Japanese pair to get off the uh, mark. Ah! Of course, uh, Uyang Wang Siali, I mean, we're talking one of the uh, best ever women's doubles pairs, aren't we, when we're looking at these two. Oh. Yeah. Wu Yang winning her seventh World Championship medal this two, tournament. Three. And when you consider she's been the winner of the gold medal in the last three World Championships, she could make it four golds here. Of course, she's won two of them with her partner, Wang Xiaoli. She also won... Uh, Another one in 2010 with a different partner. And this is what I talked about. I think the offense of the Chinese pair, Yu and Wang, is too much Four, two. for the Japanese pair. Yeah, only five players have won more than three gold medals in world championships before. Do you want a little test, Jim? Can you name them? Or? <laughs> <laughs> That's unfair, isn't it? I think you can get a few from the top of your head. I don't want to go into that one. Well, one guy's got... One guy's got... Gold? Yeah, quite a lot. Uh, His name's Lin Dan. I, thought, I think you might have got that one. Oh, yeah. Well... Chai Yun Fu Hai Feng, of course, won four golds. Six, two. The only lady that has more than three is Gao Ling. Not Gao Ling, yeah. Park Ju Bing has also got yeah. four it's, as well. She's even the arrow I played. <laughs> but uh, Gao Ling an amazing. Wu Yang can do that this week. She could make it four. And four in a row. Four different world championships. In a row. Three, six. And oh, talking about these medals that, you know, they just. It just tells you the pressure that some of these Chinese pl players are on, you know, from most other countries. You say, wow, you know, bronze medal and silver medal, and there's nothing wrong in that. I would, you know, I don't have one, so I would be <laughs> really, really fired up about that. But in, in the Chinese, what should you say, uh, the Chinese standard, it's gold. And only go well in 2010, 2011. They swept the board at both yeah. World Championships. Exactly. And it was different, obviously last year. It could be different again. Although, of course, they still have the opportunity Seven, three. Of, uh, of getting four here. Of course, they can't win a, a medal in the men's doubles because we had uh, three Koreans and a Dane at the start of the day. But of course, now we've uh, lost one of those. <laughs> Korean pairs with that walkover. Four, seven. Uh, sticking with them for now, at least.
Japanese pair, but I mean, incredible when you think they're uh, at number five in the world. They, they've yet to win together in an international event because they haven't been together that long. Um, they are together for a brief spell and then apart. <laughs> but when you when you look at that and you think, you know. They've yet to win together internationally. I mean, yeah, they have World Championship medals. Maeda has won a bronze in 2011. Uh, they're experienced. Kikiwa's an Olympic finalist, obviously with different partners. So there's the experience there, but you're looking at a pair here that uh, have won better than one in two in every tournament that they've played. Would you say this pair, Uyang Wang Sieli, kind of they were at the forefront of changing the way women's doubles now being oh, played. Oh, yeah. You can just see in the way they style and... I think they, 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 they don't, you know, just go in and rally and clear and they go in and full throttle <laughs> attack. And, and, as they, 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 and as they've done here in this match so far, 11-5 at the interval, they've gone out and they've seized the initiative straight away. Straight away. And... The Japanese pair, Kakiwa and Lida, is having trouble because that, they need that even up and running for that game to really be at the best. And in this case, it's just very difficult. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. lead already for the highest ranked seeds left in these world championships at number four one two and three i've already kissed goodbye to their chances Another question for you, Jim, see if you can do this one. I've been doing a statistical analysis on this. When was the last time China didn't win gold in a world championship? Because oh. you have to go back quite a way. Yeah, yeah, let me think, let me think. Let me think. Let's have a thing, while we're watching the game, 13-5, Wang and Gu uh, leading. 91. That's how Jin Hugo won, so we have to go. Oh! Yeah. Well, would it be would it be 83 in Copenhagen? No, not quite that far. 95. 95 it was the last time that Did China oh. didn't. When, when, where was that? That was uh, when Zhu uh, Yang Ah and Zhang Keok won. That was uh, in Switzerland. That's right, yeah. Oh, I forgot that one. But there was a few in there of, of just, you know, in the men's singles, there was Yang Yang who won twice and Sao Jin who won in Denmark last time and 
Sun Jun won. No, that was uh, before the 91, I think, in 99, Sun Jun won. So Lusan. Well, they've been doing quite well. They've done. This is this is the <laughs> event they've dominated more than. I mean, obviously the the men's singles. You, oh. you have to go back. Uh, What's happening here? Oh, it's the tape. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, this they, is the yeah. strong. I mean, and again, we're going to see another goal, aren't we? Likely. I mean, it's 15-5 here. Chinese pair waiting in the final with uh, Tian Jing and Zhao Yun Lei there. That's going to be <laughs> going to be China v China again. It's just this is the. This is what I think where, you know, we've seen it in the women's singles, you can say the world's caught up in some respect with China, you know, you're seeing. But not in ladies' doubles. No. In the rest of the events, you can see there is, there is a change. They're not looking as strong as they've looked for a long, long time. Well, no semi-finalists in the men, no, no medalist no. in the men's doubles. No. Korea certainly dominated that. We have to understand that Kai and Kai Jun and Wai Feng was there for many years too. And it was a hard void to fill, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Before that, it wasn't really China either who was controlling the men's double, so... They were a special pair. Those are these two. Along that time, another point on the board then for the uh, Japanese combination. It was only uh, nine points in a row then for Ruyang and Wang Xiali. You see in all areas of the game, Wang and, and Lu, you are just too good. I mean, the only real question mark this week was, I suppose Yu Yang has been out. With, she had an injury a couple of months out of the game this year. Just, you know, would that affect them with her fitness? And well, I suppose when you're in on court, what, half an hour or so every time, it doesn't really matter. I mean, prior to this uh, match, they hadn't dropped a set. They'd only conceded 82 points in three matches. <laughs> well, if you make that 88 now, because they've conceded six here. That's just telling everything, isn't it? <laughs> obviously, uh, I suppose that the, the low point for them had to be the Olympics. And uh, obviously, Young quickly reacted there and said she was quitting. It was good to see her come back, digest it all. It was a lot for her to digest, and we can understand why. But uh, we'd have missed out, wouldn't we, on a... Oh, what a return. Yeah, it's, it's the complete performance, this, isn't it? Yeah. You just see the race and moves, you know. The way she moved for that service return, it's way more like we see it in men's doubles. Yeah. And I think all the other pairs in the world have to, even the, the Chinese uh, pairs, <laughs> has to look up to this, these two and say, well, this is the way forward. This is how you have to play to compete in latest doubles. Yeah, because we saw Tian Jing and Zhao Yunlei, and they obviously they played really well earlier on, but it wasn't at this stand, it wasn't. No, it? definitely not. And here we have game point. 13 of them. One saved. 
to have to go. Yeah. There you go. Easy as that. Easy as that. They, they've made it look easy. No, let's not be critical of Raika Kikiwa and Miyuki Maeda here. It's like uh, trying to play badminton up against the brick wall. It keeps coming back at you and you, you can't do anything to stop. Look at this. And just, and slung one way, then the other. They're digging in, trying to keep in the point. But you know who's coming out on top. And then the young at the very end of it just says, thank you very much. 21 points to eight. 18 minutes on court. And uh, halfway to making it an all-Chinese final. Listen, I'm not saying it happened to you much, Jim, but you must have had days where you come out against a pair that just are so, so good. And you know you're second best, you're on court. What, what do you do? I've had a few of those. Second <laughs> Yeah. Not too many, though, no, I must well, add. No, but, but um, well, you can only, you can only do what, what's needed. And, and in that respect, it's, it's... Is it about damage know? limitation? No, not really, because you don't go into just limits. Even loss. after a first set like that? I, I, I don't care if I lose 21-0, uh, uh, if I've just tried everything, you know? So you constantly will be in there and try to win the game and turn it around and, you know, okay, this is not working, I have to do this. The worst thing you can do is just follow and just lose. So this is what I said, I'd rather lose 21-0 and tried it all and just, you know, Got in there and, and okay, I lost 21 10, but I really knew that the way I was playing, I wasn't going to win. So, uh, if, does it make, does it sound right? <laughs> but, yeah. But, but it's just, you know, you, you need to, in there, and that's just badminton, is that you need to constantly find, you know, a way to win your points. And it's the tactic changes all the time. looking for that little slim chance there is to turn the game around. I think we saw the girl we saw before Mitani's done it. You know, 21 7 against Ratanak. We both here were on our way to, uh, what to about, lunch. Uh, what, thinking, about, what about even today she did it, didn't she, yeah, really? I know yeah, in the yeah. end she ended up losing oh, the game. What a rally here. How did she get that way? Again. Oh, <laughs> yes. And that's what they're doing. This is, this is a perfect example of what I think you should do. The whole first set they were standing and defending or whatever. Now, Kagawa and 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 Maeda is in in, in off, you know they're attacking. Even that that's not they don't like that style all the time. That's given the young Wang Sali something to think about. Interesting style. Yeah. Oh! 
No, that's a pity, really, from a from a neutral perspective. Chinese players. more of a game right now. Did you see the Japanese They're trying some different things down. Much more movement and playing more freely. That can also be it sometimes that you feel it. <sighs> yeah, you, you go from worrying about it to thinking nothing to lose now. No, just go for it. That's a challenge. She was convinced that uh, it was out there, Yang. What's what, her reaction what, when it comes down? What her, on her reaction? She was convinced. I think she was right. I think she was right. It's close, actually. But, uh, I come on, Richard. Yeah, no, no, I'm sticking my neck <laughs> on the block. I think she was right. I, I have been wrong before. I could be wrong again. And you are not? I am right. You're talking about it. As, you shouldn't have doubted it, Jim, really. <laughs> well, you could almost see in her reaction that, that that hand came in the air straight away. Yeah. And she had the best view of the lot. difficult for the Japanese pair to be in defense because they come in with these drop shots and really long and use really building it up and then they hit look at that it wasn't a full 100% hard smash it was just really well placed and forcing the Japanese to create something themselves in the defense where they, they're more like using normally using the power of their opponent here they have to create something in there there's a lot of mistakes in that oh well played
you know, I, I know it's one-sided, but I, d I do enjoy watching this. You know when you're watching the very best? Yeah. You know, it's kind of a privilege, isn't it? But you can see, you know, you can just see small areas. Oh. <laughs> the curse. But, but there's just this build-up to this. Now that she missed that one. Just look at that. Look, they know exactly what they're doing. Pushing it. You pushing it down the line and following up herself and then Wang moving to the other side. It's these small elements in the game that you can sit and enjoy. Plenty of Chinese uh, fans have made their way into the Bellarup Super Arena and they've had plenty to cheer, haven't they? Ten, this is going to be the third match and a third Chinese win. Yeah, and they can also see that the way this game is going now. And of course, most of them are also waiting for that. All the Danes are. Yeah, the next match with yeah. Victor. <laughs> Probably going to come quicker than most people thought. Oh. Oh, just missing the lines again. And uh, at the interval, there isn't really a question of which way this one's going, is there? Hu Yang and Wang Xiaoli. 21 8 in the first game, 11 5 up in the second. seen some terrific turnarounds here but I think this would be the craziest of the lot and you know we are talking about the uh, world rank number five pair at the other end of the court up against the number four pair but you know, I'm talking about the former world number ones and winners of umpteen <laughs> tournaments and well more of the same here Complete miss hit. <laughs> and uh, from one miss hit to an impossible shot off your knees. And didn't mean that. Well, you've got to say, maybe a little fortunate with that, but you make your own luck, don't you? Five points in a row. Comes to a quick end. Yeah. yeah. If she can get that one back. Six thirteen. No respite at all here for Kakiwa and Maeda.
Yeah, I thought Lee Shiroway was very impressive. But this is even more commanding. Yeah, we'll see that. to uh, bring some kind of respectability to the scoreline. Oh, a little touch. I th that was okay. I mean, you know, I think she, she has to go for that one. Pretty good at reading the game down normally, so if you see there, she, she blocks it to the net and then she knows that's gonna come overhead, but just a little bit too high. Bang, 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 bang. Anything short like that, you know what's coming. Well, Jim, this morning, the, the drama's been at its biggest, really, when we hear there's been a, a walkover, really, yeah. I have to say. It's, uh, I suppose from a Danish perspective, you're hoping that theme doesn't continue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because then, yeah, that wouldn't be good. Uh, of course, um, now, nah, from a Danish perspective, of course, uh, I hope uh, that Mercedes and Carsten wins, of course. Uh, also, well, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the next match coming <laughs> up as well. Uh, and that as well. Uh, I do think the biggest chances are in the men's doubles and the mixed doubles for the days. I, I think, I, now I don't know what Peter said, but but I think, we, it, you know, Lee Chung Wei is too big a task. For yeah, he just said there's nothing to lose, you know. It's he has a, nothing to it, lose. It's a shot at nothing, really. But let me, you know... We'll come I've, to that. We'll come, we'll come on to yeah. that in a minute. Let's just see... Uung Wang home here first because they're getting close to it. It won't be long before no. Lee Chung Wei and uh, Victor are on court. Talking after their win yesterday, Wu Yang Wang Siali, and I saw them quoted as saying they expect to win the title again tomorrow. Wow. And you can see why. Yeah, definitely. It's not not everyone would come out with that statement. You know, you no, know. but that's why they're so good. They know they have the game. They know that if they play... If they play their best, they're almost unbeatable, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they have lost a few times to Tian Ching and Zhao Yunlei. They've lost a few times, but I think when it really comes down to it, I, I think tomorrow we'll, they will win it. But again, in sport, you never know what can happen. It could be that one of them are not feeling well tomorrow. Or... But if everything is 100%, I think you and, uh, you and Wang would take this World Championship. How was he hit with one? It's unbelievable.
match points have arrived and for those of you who want to know in the head-to-heads Wang and Hu have got a 9-3 winning record against Tianjin and Xiao Yun Lei but that looks all ready for tomorrow crowd know what's coming if it's not on this point it's going to be on one pretty soon Still in it? Just. 13, 20. There's still having a few problems with that tape. I don't think they really need to fix that one to win this game, this match. There you go. <laughs> Game over. But another bronze medal for Japan. The Kiwa Maeda just didn't have the answers because Uyang and Wang Xiali were, well, not quite perfect, but pretty close to it. They are going to be uh, the favourites, you have to say, for tomorrow's final against their compatriots, Tian Ching and Zhao Yun Lei. But for now, they can enjoy that scoreline. Winners by 21, eight points to eight, and then 21, 13. confirmation that we uh, know uh, the final lineup in the women's doubles and it's going to be gold for China. Tianjin and Zhao Yunlei will face Wang, Xiaoli and Huyang. Both uh, pretty impressive score lines you have to say. Busyness going on here, a lot of uh, movement. Everyone trying to get into position eight because uh, here come the boys. Yep, match five of the uh, first session here on semi finals day of this 2014 World Championship, and it is the world number one against the only Dane surviving in the men's singles. Victor Axelson, a place in the men's singles final up for grab. Lee John Ways obviously been in that final the last two times of asking. <laughs> what a day for Victor. Here's how uh, they got there. Look at that win over Wang Zhengmin yesterday for Lee Chun Wei. Victor overcoming uh, Chan Tian Chien, who, of course, uh, I suppose benefited from uh, Jano Jorgensen's exit. 
And of course, the, the winner of this match meets the uh, winner of uh, the Tony Sugiato Chen Long game, which is going to be on tonight. That's going to be a, a close call, I think, Sugiato and Chen. Court officials just making their way uh, out onto court. And it's amazing. This is the first match I've seen the people getting ready. This photographers, fans, all getting ready to take their photographs here. Yeah. Let's listen to the cheer here. Yeah, and again, it's both. It's not only Victor, because from Denmark, Wellington Way, a huge name in Denmark. Well, listen to the reception he's getting. Yeah. Danish people know their badminton, so they know when they see uh, a legend. Well, the cheer just that little bit louder yeah. for Victor Axelson. And that, he can't help but bring a little bit of a smile to his face. I think he was trying to hold it back, but you saw it creeping through. He's probably never heard anything like that before. No, not on this stage. Well, obviously, you know Victor very well. He's a former world junior champion. You, you know, you played a, a big part in his upbringing, if you like, in, in the game. What have you made of, of his week so far and how he's handled it? Well. I'm, I'm really, really proud of him. I think he has handled it quite well. He's, he's handled the tough games he's had, and he just actually played really well and, and won the games in a really comfortable uh, way. And, and yesterday, where he had the chance, uh, where you can say, because of Jan's uh, injury, he suddenly have had a, you know, he probably would have been looking for that Danish... Uh, Kodafana, he was, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said at the and beginning of the week, yeah. Where he was not the favourite, Jan would have been the favourite, he was suddenly the favourite. And that was... I was very curious how he would handle that. And he just handled it perfectly and played fantastic. Well, this man's played pretty well as well this week. Lee Chong Wei, the world number one. He's overcome one little hoodoo this week already, because Malaysia... Uh, they never won a medal at any of the three previous World Championships in Copenhagen, where well, they got one now. But it's not about the bronze or silver for that matter, is it, for Lee Chong Wei? It's all about gold. It's gold. And look at that. We wondered how fit, how would he manage physically after the injury? Well, that's a, a pretty good response there, isn't it? <laughs> never came close to being.